Yeah, so we're, uh, we've got the core up and we've got graphic cardboard as well. These pieces, these cutouts, this is a cutout for the door. Uh, we just left this in here to kind of show what that looks like. There's a, you got the, the tape wrap going around um, your downdraft channels. Um, the easiest way to cut this piece out here is to put the cardboard up where it's gonna be, mark out where the door is, take the cardboard off, lay the door on top of it, trace the door on the outside, cut it out. Now, the insulation strips will go here to seal the door in. And it's important that they're all there because um, for one, they, they keep a tight seal against the door. Um, they keep air because the air intake door will be here. If you don't have this one here, the air will just come right up that and then it'll screw up your, um, you know, it'll mess up the, the air inflow into the firebox. And so then that just gets a nice tight fit. And so, and today um, we've got our beta version of a wrap kit. We used it down in Oklahoma. Um, we're trying it here, out here again on this project, Thinstone Veneer uh, for a finish on this, on this heater. And so uh, these pieces are just that. This is the first piece, it's the base course, which is our leveling pad for the, for the veneer. And then, so this comes off about three inches, all said and done. And then the thin stone veneer adds another inch, two up to an inch and a half on some of those stone pieces. So you wind up with a real nice four to four and a half inch. amount of airspace possible but you've got to have some and that's what the cardboard is for yes cardboard keeps that air gap and for the most part turns into ash after the first few fires so it just, it doesn't smoke. It's just like biochar, if you know how that's produced. It uh, basically turns into biochar and descends. So. We've got this hole here because we're going to put in our air intake door frame right here. And just um, put it in there real fast for yeah, And the stone will go up around it, so this is just the, the frame itself here. And so it will just slide in there like that, and then the door opens and closes this way. It'll sit out a little more like this because the, the thin stone veneer will come in around it. And so at this level, we're ready to put on that uh, the firebox door as well. So.
just kind of a way to know if you got this probably right here. If the cardboard is compressed right to the cardboard. And there's no gap. We're gonna stick just a little bit of insulation right here so that when we fill, um, we kind of cover this up. We wouldn't want mud necessarily right up against that. But then this right here, so these stay in forever. This right here is the temporary. And so once this is all covered in stone, this gets pulled out from the inside here. It's that bolt right there, the silver ones. Silver ones get extracted before you have your first fire because you don't want it permanently attached to your core. Why not? If you permanently attach your fire door to the core and to the exterior skin, which is what these studs do, um, those two things expand and contract at a, a very different rate. And so the, the door and all the skin on the, all the brick on the outside, it's just it's going to start to just tear up. So this is really helpful for getting this set where you want it, how you want it, but you can't forget before you start your fires, pull that bolt out of there. So the whole frame here of this door, all of this is, is welded tube all the way up and around. And so you've got, so the air comes up in here and it goes into the door itself. And the door distributes it into the firebox. So you've got air coming in here, and that's good for just blowing off the coals at the end of a fire and keeping some bottom feed air. And then you've got four slots cut in up here. So air comes in at the top, and air comes in and washes over your glass to keep your glass clean during the fire. And so in that way, it gets distributed in multiple areas, which is what you know uh, allows for an efficient burn inside the firebox. What is that thing? So we're getting ready to pop on the bake oven trim plate here. So this just gets, we've got the cardboard cut out all set for it. This gets tap conned in as well. The screws come with the kit. And then the bake oven door just gets fastened to this very, very easily. Um, so it just, we screw this on and we screw the bake oven door on and that's all set. perfect here. We're above by it's not more than a quarter. The flush there. Very, very similar. So, like, I think it's a nice size sill, you know, like, I, I... How, how, how often do people do a sill with uh, bake oven? Any recommendations? Um, I, the sill, yeah, I like an 8-inch sill, personally. And if you wanted it longer, you could go longer, but you would have to cut, um, you know, this out. And you could come over further if you wanted to project it further off the wall. Um, I think it's a nice functional sill, because you can at least set your coffee down open up your your bake oven take something out of it shut the door and you know it serves some function there um if it doesn't project out at all any shorter then right. it's just decorative it doesn't do much for you so so i like i think this is a nice functional still i think it's a good size <clears throat> um person could make it longer if they wanted to but I think it's a nice... How far out? How? This is an 8 inch. So 8 inch minus, you know, the half inch um, edge dressing. So it's about 7 and a half. And the door will sit out in front of it a little bit. It gives you a good 6, 7 inch pad there. So...
So, so yeah, we've got uh, we've got the core up. We've got our wrap kit on um, stone sill installed, and and now we've got these gaps here, this side and that side, and, and a lot of people, uh, you know, because we've got a four inch clearance to combustibles, we're a little a little further here, but one of the things you you can do is the code ASDM E1602 allows for a, a four inch wing wall to span between the heater and a combustible wall so that you can use the heater as a room divider. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to lay our block up. We'll take this all the way to the ceiling. We're going to lay it down on that side as well so that once we get all of our framing done, that this heater is going to look like it starts here and ends over there and it's continuous kind of flat to the wall. So, um, so yeah, uh, I was, I was also going to say too that normally <clears throat> I wouldn't recommend such a, such a, a niche location for a heater. The difference here, you know, because like it looks like this heater is going to be like tucked in deep and only really exposed on this face and that's just not true. So we're going to have the full exposure on the back as well. We'll have this open over here on the wood storage area. The more of an alcove that you put a heater into, the worse the location because the it doesn't allow the radiant effect of the heater to work. So, but this heater is actually going to the full face is open on this floor. On the back side, uh, half of it is open to the basement and half of it is open to the upstairs. And so it's it's a unique location. Um, the sides are a little bit alcoved. And so what we're going to do to facilitate some some air movement is we're going to cut in an air vent down low to allow cooler air from the basement to pull up and be warmed and then another air vent up here to allow that out so that it can kind of circle around. And we'll do this, the same on, on this side over here in some fashion here as well. So that's how we're going to try and improve the situation that it is recessed. Um, but just so you understand, it's not a full recess. I, I don't even like doing that because it just really takes away from what the heater can do. So uh, we're gonna have the full face and the full back exposed and that's, that's, uh, that's not a bad situation, so. Yeah. I keep everything from Do you want like this whole thing down there so you can use the... What's that? Do you want this whole thing down there so you yeah. can use... slide through so we want to kind of be a little careful there so we get the first screw in. Just the time is this yeah, that's fine. Wood storage box, how you're building yeah, it. So Concrete board in the box. Yeah, so we're putting on, we're on the back side of this heater, and we're going to, uh, this is going to be the wood storage box area, so we're just going to run a wing wall all the way from this wall over to the heater. This whole back side will get stuccoed, and it will just take on the appearance of the interior of the room. It wouldn't be known to anybody unless they knew there was a heater here. Um, so we're just going to run block for the back wall and then you know interior we'll use the same stone here here and there 
as the rest of the heater so that it's uh, all wrapped in the same stone. And what is that board? So, and then we're just gonna we just put some cement board on here, and then we'll we can throw our thin veneer stone right on that cement board. So. Yeah.